Carrying out this fundamental truth, you need to seek for no other methods, but must only concentrate your thoughts on it. The book Ling Yin says, by collecting the thoughts one can fly and will be reborn in heaven. Heaven is not the wide blue sky, but the place where the body is made in the house of the creative. If one keeps this up for a long time, there develops quite naturally, besides the ordinary body, a spirit body. Hi, and welcome to the latest episode of <laughs> The Secret of the Golden Flower. Well, it's not so much of a secret, is it, anymore? <laughs> it's actually already been given in the previous episodes. And Osho called this the secret of secrets. Now, he's not one given to hype, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> but this title has a deep meaning. That among all different methods of meditation, and there are hundreds if not thousands of them, the goal in every single one of them is to reverse the flow. That means change the habitual outward flow of energy, life energy, chi, ki, prana, essence, and make it flow inward instead. So, I mean, from my point of view, this is very easy to do. But apparently, <laughs> from the feedback I've been getting, a lot of people are having trouble with it. Even people who have been following me, more or less, for years. I know one, my oldest student, current student, well, lives in Norway, and he's very good at flowing energy, but only outward. As soon as he tries to reverse the energy, you know, things don't go so well. So what is this? It's called compulsive extroversion. It's trained into us by parents, by the school, by society, by our jobs, by every force in the culture. Why? Because a person who is compulsively extroverted cannot meditate. And meditation is very dangerous because uh, heaven knows the next thing you might start to think for yourself. We don't want that now, do we? So, culture and governments and religions down through history have used various strategies and devices to keep you from thinking for yourself, to keep you from reversing the flow, to keep you from becoming self-aware. Because, like we said, awareness of awareness is reversing the flow. So, now, here it says, you need not seek any other method. Now, that might sound on the surface as a very sectarian, elitist kind of thing to say. Huh? Our method is the best. You don't need to look anywhere else. That's what everybody's saying, right? But here, it actually means something. It means that this is the secret of secrets. This is the meta-method that all other methods are trying to get you to grasp. Now, the thing about this method is, not only does it fly against all the other things that we've been taught and enculturated and habituated to do, but it's coming from a source that has no institutional backing. 
In other words, this teaching is not claimed by any major group, neither Taoist nor Buddhist nor any others. Although it's very closely related with Chan Buddhism and Taoism, still none of the orthodoxies will claim it. Why is that? Well, for one thing, it is really the Metta Method. Very powerful secret. For another thing, this was kept secret itself for many, many years, many generations. It was only written down because of the Cultural Revolution. The Cultural Revolution was like a cultural suicide. In China they destroyed as much as they could of the old culture the old ways and instituted this new nonsense materialist communist dictatorship very ugly thing they did and in the process many many monks and seers and yogis were killed or punished thrown into jails and never came out it was a horrible thing that happened so in those days, which was about 1910, 1912, something like that, the, the seers decided to write this tradition down for the first time. It had never been written down before. And there were various versions, and some of them seemed to be more complete than others, and so on and so forth. But the version we're using is the one that Osho taught from, and the one that we studied um, at the time of the first path. So this first path, if you can get it, it's the most fantastic thing. It's the most dramatic of all the four paths. Uh, the other ones are more subtle. But first path is like the trumpets, the heavenly trumpets sound and the angels come down and sing. Well, not exactly, but <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> so you can attain this first degree of enlightenment through this path, through this method. And it is also very helpful in attaining the other three paths. So this method is actually the core or the uh, operative principle of all other meditation methods. So they're really, they're telling the truth here, it's not hype. And the next thing is, you must only concentrate your thoughts on it. Oh, if we could only concentrate our thoughts. Well, if you read the description of the first jhana in the Buddha scriptures, the Buddha suttas, he says this is concentration and application of directed thinking without any sensual clinging, without any attachment. In other words, it's a mental discipline of channeling the thoughts in a certain direction. Now, look at it like this. Let's say you're, I'm not going to say meditating, let's say you're just sitting. And now you're watching your awareness. You become aware of your awareness. But what happens? Well, you'll be surprised. Every second, there are many, many impressions of sensory inputs and also of thoughts. But these thoughts don't seem to follow any scheme, any design. It's simply an associational tree that goes back, back, back to the original uh, experiences of mm, fertilization of the embryo and uh, division of the blastomere and, and so on implantation in the womb and so all of these early 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 uh, incidents and then from there has branched out into all the senses and all the different mental categories so the mind is simply jumping like a monkey from one branch to another of this big tree yeah? and one minute you can be thinking about something very elevated and, and serious and the next minute you could be thinking about some I love loosely show that you saw 50 years ago when you were a kid. This is going on. This is the mind. So if you begin to control these thoughts, to direct these thoughts in a certain direction, you can reach the first jhana. 
However, these thoughts have to be of a certain flavor, a certain category, a certain quality. So what is that quality? Well, the best thoughts to have are thoughts of enlightenment or reaching enlightenment. So if, let's say, every single thought that comes into your mind, you look at it and say, is this an outflow or an inflow? Don't try to do anything. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to force anything. That will not work at all. Because even if you're successful in forcing for some time, as soon as you stop, oh, <laughs> mind will go crazy. So don't do anything. Just look and think. Let's say if I'm over there trying to read this slide on the computer. What am I doing? The energy is going out and reflecting from the image on the computer and coming back. And then again, I'm going out and grasping it and bringing it in and using it to speak. Okay, so is that an outflow or an inflow? Well, you have to break it down into its atomic size pieces. And you'll see most of them are outflow. Maybe there's one or two little moments of inflow. But then again, we get busy with, the, with that input and start to make something out of it and create a future and so on. But that's just thinking. That's just the way it is. That's the way thinking works. So, okay. You, now, you're not doing anything. You're not trying to force the mind. You're not trying to concentrate, huh? because that's an effort. Don't make effort. Don't seek. Don't go looking outside of yourself, because that's an outflow again. But simply watch, observe. And slowly, slowly, simply by this observation, by this watching, oh, this is an outflow. Oh, that's an outflow too. Oh, look at that. That's an outflow. Every time I feel my body, that's an outflow. Every time I hear something, that's an outflow. I'm going outside. Instead, we should be looking inside. That's meditation, not concentration. Now, I'm not looking only inside. I'm letting whatever happens happen. But I am aware this is an outflow. This is an inflow. And you'll see 99% is outflow. But if you're aware, slowly, slowly, it will begin to change. Gradually, very slowly. And for a while, you may have only inflows. Not because you're trying to do it, but because you're simply watching, you're simply observing, and allowing. That's the secret of meditation. Concentration requires effort to narrow the attention and focus on one particular thing. Actual meditation means completely relaxing, stopping any effort, and just allowing whatever is going to happen to happen. And it's beautiful. This is the thing that always surprises people because they're used to this meditation idea, basically uh, concentration. And no, no, it's a misdefinition of the term meditation. First of all, you don't do meditation. Meditation happens. It's spontaneous. It's natural. It's an inflow. It's a non-doing. You can't do meditation by definition because meditation is non-doing. So whatever you can do, that's simply concentration. And it helps. You know, the eight jhanas defined by the Buddha are very helpful for reaching higher states. And why is that? Well, because they simulate certain bases of awareness. Okay, especially the higher jhanas, the immaterial jhanas. After you reach a complete neutrality. Um, then the next thing is unlimited space, unlimited consciousness, nothingness. 
And finally, neither perception nor non-perception. Then there's one step from there to Nirvana. <laughs> so you should practice these. Nothing wrong with it. But also allow meditation. Sometimes just sit there. Don't do anything. Don't concentrate. Don't use any method. Huh? Just watch and see what happens. But watch with awareness that hmm, this is an outflow. This is an inflow. And you'll be surprised. After some time, we'll begin to change all by itself. Now, Ling Yan says, by collecting the thoughts, one can fly and will be reborn in heaven. So, oh good, we're all going to heaven, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> no, it's not literal heaven. And it's not literal flying either. Anyone who has uh, had certain experiences, either with meditation or with some psychedelics, or some combination, <laughs> knows the feeling. When your body becomes completely light, when there's no friction, huh? effortless, just, uh, you're not feeling like this is a lump of meat or this is a, a machine that you're inside of and you're moving around. You don't feel the body at all. Body is, is there, but it's effortless. It's light. It's like floating. It's flying. And this is an energy phenomenon, not physical flying. <clears throat> and you're not going to heaven, literal heaven, like up in the sky somewhere. No. The heaven is right here. When you reverse the flow in the Agya Chakra, you experience bliss. You know, I keep telling people, like, this is so easy to do. Once you get the knack, it's like riding a bicycle. You have to practice it. If you practice it for some time, little by little, you'll get it. The awkwardness will disappear, and you'll get the knack. Same with this. You... At the beginning, you may struggle a little bit. You may uh, have to try for some time. So go ahead, try this, try that. Now when you see the lights, huh? when you see the nimitta, the sign, a flashing light, could be a pinpoint of white or blue light, or sometimes a reddish light, that's rare. Most of the time it will be white or blue. You'll get a flash. That means you're rightly situated. Keep it up. It's a sign. Okay? So the first time it's a flash. Second time it may be a little longer. After a while they may persist and gradually grow and increase. Or suddenly you look beyond the flash and you see a whole landscape of light. Uh, overwhelmingly intense light in all directions. Another trick is, let's say you see the light, okay? Now, it's natural when you see this flash of light for attention to concentrate on, to narrow down. So if you then consciously open up the vision to the full uh, peripheral vision, then the inward flow may start spontaneously. Try it. I already gave the mirror gazing exercise where you look in the mirror and instead of thinking I'm looking at the reflection, think the reflection is looking at me. That worked for me the first time. It blew my mind too. Now, I know some people who actually get scared and upset when they do this exercise. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt you. In fact, if you get it, you're going to experience so much bliss. On the other side of that fear is a kind of excitement that, well, I would love to share with you. So now I'm out of time. I can't go on. But uh, next time I'm going to go into Jane logic, seven valued 
transcendental logic uh, in order to explain why it's so difficult to simply turn around your life.